Hello, this is Mike Lodge. I'm glad that you're with me. This is The Business Advisor. And today, this morning, it was chilly. I got up and I had to put a little sweater on because it was cold. I mean, it was like 50-some degrees in the the part of uh, summer that we're in at the moment. It's starting to get hot during the day. Uh, like yesterday was up in the 80s and the humidity was really, really tough. But today, not a cloud in the sky, perfectly blue skies. Sun is shining through the trees. I wish you could see as I'm looking out my window to see exactly what it looks like. It is a beautiful sight. And it is chilly. And you can probably hear some of the birds singing in the background. I have never been in a house where the birds sing so much. It is constant all day long, nonstop. I, they never get tired. They keep singing and singing and singing. But that's good. That means that God's around and there's a good life out there. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit this morning about the uh, fuel supply that we have at the moment. I'm really concerned because there are other countries that are having a severe problem with their gasoline and their, and their diesel. Sri Lanka has run out of petrol. They've run out of fuel. And it's unable to find dollars to finance essential imports. The new prime minister said on Monday there. So they have run out of money. They have run out of fuel. They have no more fuel left. That was yesterday when they got that. So today, they're gone. They don't have anything. Now, in the next week, expect that we are going to have severe problems with with diesel. Diesel is just about out. And the reason why it's about out is because we've been sending the majority of it over to Europe. Now, if we get to the situation where diesel is not available to our truck drivers to deliver the goods to our stores and to our our you know manufacturing facilities, we are in trouble. They are expecting, there was a, a rumor that I saw yesterday reported that diesel could get up to $10 per gallon because of the shortage. Do you know what that does to the rest of our food supply? It raises it right up because the all of our food is hauled by diesel trucks. So we are, we are getting very close to a situation here because of our diesel Capacity just is not there any longer, which means that a lot of trucks are going to have to just get out of the trucking industry because there's, they can't afford the gas. Last week, it was costing a truck driver about $1,700 to fill up a gas tank. That's a lot of money. And when those prices go up, that means that everything that we purchase at the store goes up. So what do we have to do? Well, right now would be a good time to stock up on your supplies. Stock up on your supplies. Keep your gas full in your tanks, okay, in your in your car. Make sure that if you're halfway full, fill it up to the top. Because it's going to get tough in the next few weeks on our, on our gas supply. It's just there. We're at that point at the moment. And if you listen to the people in the industry that are supplying food and are supplying merchandise to the stores, they're saying that a lot of those stores are going to be empty because there is no diesel fuel supply. They're going to have to start rationing it. So we're in trouble. So that means that you and I, we've got to think uh, ahead of the box here. So we need to put make, make sure that our pantries are filled up with, with, with invent, food inventory. Cans, get as much cans as you possibly can. <laughs> but we have to prepare. And we have to make sure that we've got goods in our house that we can survive on. Now, hopefully, hopefully the the uh, president will start doing better decision making in his uh, energy policies here. Because right now they stink. And it's holding back on the production of fuel. And by the way, if we are sending fuel to Europe, our diesel fuel to Europe, when our diesel trucks need it, we're in trouble. Which means that policy should be hold back the diesel that is sufficient enough for our 
trucking industry here in the in the United States. Hold it back. Don't send any more to Europe. Only send the excess if we if we uh, have enough diesel supply or inventory in our in our ranks here. We cannot let Americans go hungry. And we have to make sure that this delivery that is done through the trucking industry is is continually continuing to move forward. If we have an energy policy that attacks the oil industry and attacks the production of diesel, then we have the wrong policy. And we probably have the wrong president because he's making political decisions, but he's not making sound economic decisions for the United for the United States citizens. So I'm sure that you've noticed that just within this week, gas prices have gone up. We have to look at how this is being produced because right now a lot of these oil producing refineries, some of them have been shut down. Three and four of them have been shut down. Well, just three and four cuts down on inventory because we're not producing as much uh, that we used to that we used to do. Remember, when all these barrels come in, what do they do? They go straight to the refinery and they begin to be refining down into uh, diesel or gas or the various levels of gas. So if we have a situation. Listen, of Sri Lanka which is a small nation, if other nations are going to have the same problem, where they're unable to have the financing available to purchase gas and to to purchase the necessary, necessary items for their country, there's a big problem. So you and I have got to be proactive on this. And that means that we need to build up our own inventory of supplies within our homes. And we need to start doing that now. The other issue is security. Because gasoline prices are going so high, we are having a a run of crime wave on people who are who are stealing gasoline fuel out of people's cars. That's one of the biggest issues that they have especially in Los Angeles, they have crime wave after crime wave of individuals stealing gasoline and fuel out of people's cars because they can sell it for big bucks on the open market. So people are putting locks on their on their uh, on their cars, they're putting locks on their houses, they're putting locks on like if you have a motorhome, they're putting heavy duty locks so that people cannot take the the diesel fuel out of their Vehicles, because they store, you know, 100 gallons, uh, sometimes 200 gallons of fuel on motorhomes. So everybody is beginning to look at the security issue of this fuel shortage. And there is one. Things are being stolen out of cars left and right now because people are desperate. People are running out of money. Do you realize that the debt on credit cards in the American household has gone way up? In March, they spent $40 billion of credit card. That means people went into $40 billion worth of debt. Because their income isn't sufficient enough to cover the cost of living every single day. This is a big issue. So when debt goes up, that also means that interest rates are going up at the moment also because of the Federal Reserve. So those individuals who are out there on a... Loan. They have a loan on the house where it's not a fixed, but it's tied to the interest rate. So when their interest rates go up, their home, uh, their their home uh, costs go up on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis, the payments, the house payments are going up. Well, at some point in time, people just cannot afford that, because I've heard that people their payments have gone up by three hundred dollars or more. Because of the interest rate increase. Well, when that begins to happen, what, what people begin to fail on their mortgage payments. Banks have already told realtors to get ready to handle a slew of foreclosures. And now you can get yourself on a list of homes that are going to go into foreclosure. Call your bank and you can find what that is. But this is the problem, is that our economy... You see, we when... 
the news talks about the economy, they mostly talk about what's happening in the stock market, right? The stock market only affects us if we have 401k plans and they're tied to the stock market. But for us to buy food and to buy gas and to buy medicine and to buy clothing, that's a totally different economy. That's the real economy. That's the economy that you and I have to survive in every single day. Wall Street lives high and mighty. Now, some of them are having problems in the investment because stocks have failed in the last few days. But the real economy is the one that you and I live in. When we go to the gas station and it's and it's a college education <laughs> to put gas in your car, you know there's a problem. When you go to the store and buy food that used to be $85, that I'm talking about myself now, I used to spend $85 a week. Yesterday, on Sunday, I went to the grocery store and for the same amount of food that I normally buy, because it's always basically the same, $151. So that means I went from $85 to $151 a week. So I have had to start rethinking the way I spend my money on groceries and I planted myself a garden so in a few weeks I'll have vegetables coming out of there. And I have stocked up my pantry and I have stocked up my freezer. And I have put stuff in there that I can survive on in case something happens. Now, all of us need to start doing this. And all of us need to be proactive in this. Because if we're not, we're going to be in trouble. If you've noticed that the food banks are completely filled up, out the line, in Orange County, which is one of the richest counties in California, food banks are filled up. Lines out the door, down the block, for people trying to survive in California. And it happens all around the, around the United States. So we have a economic problem. So when people on the news and when the president stands before you and says, Oh, the economy's good. Oh, I know. I, I know that you're hurting from inflation. And I, he can smell it. Well, I'm sorry. You can't smell inflation. You feel it. You literally feel it. And it comes out of the pocketbook. Well, see, he doesn't care because he has the White House. Everything's paid for him by us, the taxpayer. Even his clothing allowance is paid by the taxpayer. His food is paid by the taxpayer. He doesn't have to worry about anything. He collects a check, puts it in the bank, and he's ready to go. The rest of us, though, we get a check, and it barely buys us a carrot. (laughs) That's how bad it's gotten. Listen, stock up, get prepared. We have got to get through this together. If you have any good ideas, let me know what you're doing because I really want to hear about it. I want to know what you're doing to fight this inflation and what you are doing to prepare for a downturn in the economy and fuel shortages. Tell me. I want to hear it. Send it to info at lodge-co.com. Listen, if you would like to support me on my podcast, go to www buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. And if you want to have more access to me, go to my business website, which is www.lodge-co.com. I want to hear what you guys are doing. I want you to become proactive. Let's work it together. If you have any ideas, share it with me so I can share it with my listeners. I want to know what you're doing. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. Bye-bye.